Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are back on my evil science lab world. Yes we are, it is episode 4, and as always I am very happy to see you. Thank you ever so much for the amount of support that we got in the last episode of this, and also in last Sunday's episode of Hermitcraft. Now I know that might sound odd, but as you know, I record all of these videos a week in advance, and I am literally just coming off the back of being ill. I have been ill over the past four days and I'm finally feeling better which is always nice just just coming out of illness is the best feeling ever in my opinion except right now I'm perhaps not feeling so great because I've just eaten a massive meal and I can still feel all of the food in my stomach which is it's never a pleasant feeling is it when that happens but anyway we are on my evil science and have world so I've got to be feeling good because in this episode we are going to be working on a bunch of really cool stuff. In the last one, we did a ton of stuff ready for this one. We're going to be building the nuclear reactor. We already have our sort of hangar or control room already. And then out the back here, hopefully, is going to be our nuclear reactor. I haven't really thought how I'm going to do this yet. But I do have a few plans in my head. But I thought the first thing that we would have to do is create the control room. Obviously, these things require a lot of buttons, switches, and sciencey stuff. And I thought we could play around with that using a little bit of redstone. So what I'm going to do is gather up some ideas and get to work on them. So I've been doing a few things in terms of the control circuits, all of the things that look like they should be controlling our nuclear reactor. And there's a few things that I've done but so far, all of them are static. As you can see, we have some lights down at the bottom that I assume control these temperature gauges, they look like. I don't really know. Then these things over here, they use redstone lamps. And that means that we can toggle these kind of things quite easily. But what I was trying to think through is how I want these to work. Because obviously, I want the meters to change occasionally. And I didn't want it to look like it was on a clock and also doing it on a clock It looks a little bit silly if you've just got a clock running round and round and round with that flickering on and off So what I thought I would do and this is some very old-school redstone here is We are going to go back into the days before any of the complicated stuff and we are going to use ourselves a chicken randomizer I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but it pretty much does what it says on the tin it uses a chicken to randomize when you want something to activate. When you want an input to happen or an output to happen, you use a chicken and it randomizes the whole thing pretty much as well as you can do. So what we do is we just create this little thing and we grab ourselves a chicken um, from here and I can never remember what all of these are, so there is the chicken. And we just plonk him down here, place some glass on top, and then as you will see, gradually he will start moving around, he will walk onto the pressure plate and he will turn on the light, randomly. It, it, it happens just completely randomly when the chicken feels like moving, he will turn on that light and then eventually he will walk off of the pressure plate, turn off the light and we have got ourselves a fairly good looking set of meters. So let's just quickly do that again. This is going to be a nice little old school redstone lesson for you in case you have never heard of this kind of thing. So yeah, you just plonk down your chicken in the middle there and then you replace the glass on top. Doesn't even have to be glass, it can be whatever you want. And oh, we forgot something fairly essential on that one. We've got a pressure plate, so we'll just plonk that down there. And yeah, chicken randomers. I, I haven't used one of these in ages, but they are pretty awesome, aren't they? All of those dials are now in place, the chicken randomizers are doing their job and everything is working fine. You saw me build it, you know exactly how it works and for that reason I am not going to be talking about it for much longer. What you may also notice about this room that is slightly more peculiar is the fact that I've actually dropped the floor down by a couple of blocks. And don't worry, I haven't gone mad, this isn't some kind of new modern art style feature. I'm actually going to be doing what I did in the redstone consultancy on Hermitcraft. I'm going to be putting a bunch of redstone components down on the ground in strange, crazy, haywire places so they all connect up and look really cool. And then on top of that, I'll put a layer of glass so that you can see the right the way on through and all of the redstone components underneath. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then just wait a few seconds for the jump cut. I will just jump straight to it and you will see exactly what I mean. Wow, I never thought it would take this long to just place a bunch of redstone junk all around the place, but over here I have got myself a lever. Eventually this is going to be hooked up to some kind of redstone clock, which means that it will run 
all of the time, so watch out anyone that doesn't have quite such a good PC. But anyway, as you can see, when we flick this lever, the whole floor sort of comes alive. And the only things that you can really notice are the pistons moving, and I probably should have added a few more of those. Also, some of the redstone circuits seem to lead towards a bit of a dead end. Like over here, you can see that this actually doesn't unpower itself, which is a bit strange because I can't... Yeah, see, look, it's powering itself there, which means that... Ah, we've just kicked off a whole bunch more of the circuit. Where else is that happening? It's happening there, um, but that seems to have sort of got stuck on... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take a look around and inspect some more of the redstone because it looks like I have made some self-powering circuits that I didn't want to do because that sort of ruins the whole effect if not all of the floor fires off. But as you can see, it is quite a good looking effect. Now all I have to do is add in the redstone clock, cover it up in glass and leave it be because I think that is pretty nice. Here it is in all of its glory and after seeing all of that, I am now going to turn it off just for the minute because it is just far too taxing on my computer. I don't know what's going on at the minute, but my computer seems to be running a little bit slower than usual and that certainly isn't helping the situation. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be adding in the self-destruct button, basically the abandon ship button. Every single evil science lab has to have some way in which someone can blow it up, otherwise it isn't a true evil science lab. So what you need is you need a sort of security mechanism. So the player is going to come along and they would have to flick this lever and then this red block here will actually retract, revealing a button in which they can press and then it can blow up the whole facility. It'll be a little bit of fun. Don't worry, I'm not going to test it out until the very end. And before I do that, I will make a backup so that you can put a download in the description so that you can actually check it out because I think a few of you would be fairly annoyed if I went through all of this and then just blew it up at the end. I don't think that would be particularly good. But uh, the way that we need to do this, and it's a little bit odd, in the redstone wiring here and don't mind me just knocking out all of these blocks here uh, so what we need to do is we need a few iron blocks to start off with because the only way that I can use redstone is if it's on top of iron blocks and then we need redstone dust here a couple repeaters and oh I placed that in the wrong place so redstone dust there and then a repeater with four ticks on it and then another piece of redstone dust and we should see that if we were to power this on, basically, this will come outwards like that. So yeah, that works absolutely perfect. This comes outwards, it is completely flush with the wall. So then if we have something like this, you can clearly see it is in fact flush with the wall. So now all we have to do is actually run this into this, and that shouldn't be too difficult whatsoever. Just need to do a little bit more clearing. It is so much harder working in an actual world building redstone as opposed to working in like an air world or some kind of flat testing world. That is what I usually do. And if you are trying to work with redstone, I wouldn't suggest starting off in a natural environment because it is so difficult, at least as far as I'm concerned it is. So anyway, we need to run this redstone line up into here. That is going to be the input. So we'll just take a redstone dust and run it around like this. It shouldn't be too difficult whatsoever. Nice and easy connect that up using redstone dust and that is currently on which I'm absolutely fine with and we'll just run that all the way over there can I reach uh, not quite I have to do a little bit more breakage of blocks but there we go that is that part done that wasn't too difficult whatsoever so then when we flick this lever over here we should see that this all opens up so now we can cover up all of that ugly redstone dust and out the back here we want to create a little area in which the player can just see the button. They don't want to have to see anything else, so it is just the button. And there we go, I think, just about anyway. And then the button will obviously go out the back here. And that is what they will pla place, press, if they want to blow up this whole place. So here it is. This is our nuclear reactor in place at the minute. We are being exposed to horrific levels of radiation I think you will find we don't have a window on this thing but that will come eventually at the minute we are going to start adding in a bunch of the safety procedures but before I do that I want you to go down to the comment section and let me know how I can make this look 
like a nuclear reactor. I don't actually know what one looks like and I haven't thought to Google it yet. That probably would have been a good idea, but I know that real life nuclear reactors don't look quite as cool as the sort of fake Hollywood movie nuclear reactors in which there's just a big glowing pile of uranium in the middle of a, a glass chamber. I, I much prefer the look of that in terms of this evil science lab. But anyway, what we have over here is we've got a bunch of switches and each one of these is going to connect up to some kind of control thing inside our nuclear reactor. Over here, we've got the lighting because obviously this place is pretty dark so we can light it up and then we have cooling, we have addition control rods so it's going to throw some control rods in there and then we have charge up the battery and also dismantle the uranium so it's going to pull it apart a little bit just to allow it to cool down I don't really know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build each one of these and then I'll do a jump cut so I'll build the lighting show you it and then I'll build the cooling show you it etc 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 you get the idea so let's begin the lighting element is now done. You have seen this used quite a lot throughout this entire base, but here we go, flick the lever, and you can see that all of the lights come on. If we quickly take the fastest ever look at the redstone, you can see it is incredibly boring. There is just a bunch of repeaters running across the line of redstone lamps. So now let's move on to our cooling system, which hopefully is a little bit more interesting. Cooling systems can now be ticked off the list, and I am over the moon with how this actually looks. I was expecting it to be a lot less dramatic, but here we go. You flick the lever, and look at that. That definitely looks like we are, in fact, cooling off our nuclear reactor. And obviously, these two are independent of one another, so you can turn off all of the lights and turn them back on again. And then when you flick the lever once again, all of the water leaves and you may notice that that is a bit strange for a dispenser because generally speaking they only dispense water on an on input so when you flick the lever once it will dispense and then when you turn it off nothing really happens and uh, the way that I've actually got around doing this is I've added in a very nice little circuit this is known as a dual edge monostable circuit and what it allows you to do is give a pulse on the rising edge so when you flick the lever on and also a pulse on the falling edge when you turn the lever off so it works really well and it is perfect for this kind of functionality to allow for a really badass cooling system but anyway now on to the next one which I believe is the control rods Another small addition to the nuclear reactor, this time it is in the form of control rods. Basically, these are additional cooling. They just flip upwards and touch our nuclear reactor. They are ultra cold, and control rods, I think, are one of the few things that I actually have in this build that are actually in nuclear reactors. Now, this is not an accurate representation of them. Basically, a nuclear reactor has a bunch of cores, and then the control rods go in between the cores and make sure that the temperature is nice and cool because you don't want things to overheat. So there we go. That is a little bit of facts and knowledge for today. And now on to making our little charger. Now for the charger, I actually had to get a little bit technical here. Now I was all more than ready to hang up my boots on this idea. I was just going to make it so that it was a flat rate. It couldn't be varied, but then I came up with an idea. And as you can see, our little build is charging up here. And then if we flick this off, you will see that it begins to go down because obviously we aren't charging it. It is now using charge. Perhaps it's going through its backup energy or something. And the way that I have done this is, of course, using hoppers and redstone power strength. And it's this tiny little circuit down here. I apologize if you cannot understand what is going on because there is a ton of stuff going on here. But basically, we have one hopper that is powered and one hopper that isn't. So all of the items from this hopper are now flowing into this hopper because, obviously, we are running low on charge. The redstone strength is going down, so that means that the lights are gradually turning off. Now, on the flip side, when we flick that lever on, this hopper is now powered and this hopper is unpowered. So all of the items from this hopper flow into this hopper. And that means that gradually the signal strength increases and all of our redstone lamps come on. Now, I'm quite proud of this one. I don't know why, but I thought it was quite smart. So there we go. And last but not least, our little uranium distribution system in which the pistons pull out some of the uranium from the main batch. I mean, really, 
I don't know what that particularly does, but this was a little bit of a task to do, and I actually had to relocate some of our water spurts over here so that they didn't interact with the redstone because we all know what happens when water gets involved with redstone. Bad things happen, but actually, I am very, very happy with how this has all turned out. Our little water cooling system, our control rods that you can see down at the bottom here, they all work well. Our little charger, I am oh so proud with because I don't know smart things like that, they make me happy. Who knows, maybe I'm just a sad human being, but the last little touch with is the uranium distribution system. It's all great. It's all great. Our nuclear reactor is working like a dream. We even have our chicken randomizers over here. Haven't forgotten about those. Big fan. But anyway, I hope that you did enjoy this video. I really, really do because I loved making it. I think it's been great fun. I just love making pointless things like this in Minecraft. It is my favorite thing to do, just letting those creative juices get flowing. So like I say, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.